Um, we will start uh, with the follow-up of the discussion that we had last time. And what we have done so far, we did the field quantization. So we were able to quantize the field. And even we discussed a little bit about the uh, uh, infinite energy of vacuum or the zero uh, state or uh, 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 zero energy. So which is not equal to zero, it has one divided by two h bar omega uh, h bar times omega k for each mode uh, uh, that exists in the in a vacuum. So that was a little bit surprising for us. And uh, that was the discussion that we had afterward. I think, I don't remember what I made an example. Maybe I made an example of cosm dynamic Casimir effect that these exist and people, they have observed that. And uh, even before that, but there were many, many other uh, uh, experiment that uh, they confirm the existence of vacuum and vacuum's energy or vacuum's mode. So let's start, uh, let me look at my notes and see uh, what I have, uh, what I finished last time, where it was. Okay, so we uh, look at the harmonic oscillators and what we got for harmonic oscillators was uh, uh, one dimensional harmonic oscillators that we got the Hamiltonian and Hamiltonian was uh, one uh, P2 divided by two M plus one half of M omega square Q square. And of course, remember that P and Q, they are operator. And P and Q commutations was uh, I divided by H bar. So we drive uh, all of those equations. And then we say that it's better to write equations in terms of annihilation and creation operator, which uh, uh, we define them in terms of 2m h bar omega. And then we had m omega q plus i p. And the other one, a dagger, we found that is given by 1 divided by 2m h bar omega, m omega q minus i p. And then from the commutation relation, we we figured out that also A and A dagger, they won't commute. So the result will be one. And uh, from these equations, we found, uh, we inverse the, the relation and we found that P is given by uh, square root of H bar divided by two M omega and A dagger minus A. And Q, we found that is given by uh, H bar divided by two M omega, um, up, 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 A dagger plus A. I think one of them should have one divided by I. Let me do, so if I sum up the Q should not have, if I do this, it will be one divided by two. So two goes inside, so it will be one divided by i. Mm, oh, i here. Yeah. Okay, because it will be dangerous. Lovely. Uh, and then uh, from this, we found that Hamiltonian, essentially in terms of a and a dagger can be written as one divided by two, h bar omega a, a dagger plus a dagger a. or uh, in a simple way, h bar omega, a dagger a, plus one half, which we, we use the commutation relation. And we looked at a and a dagger and we found that a dagger acting on n state will give us a state which is n plus one and the coefficient is given by square root of n and we assume that the phase is uh, is somehow we we can we can keep it in other terms uh, if is needed and a acting on n will give us a lower energy state or uh, eigenstate which is uh, which is n minus 1 and this is what we found so far and from this relation 
we did the quantization uh, for, um, for electromagnetic field, and we say that, say, say Ibrahim? Yes. Did you switch the coefficients for the A, a dagger? Oh, yes. Uh, like a, a dagger? A dagger n is n plus one, cat n plus one. And then A acting on n is square root of n times n. Hey, can you say, let me write it down. Can you say to me, A dagger acting on n? Should be square root of n plus one. Acting on n plus one. Root n. No. I drive these last time. Was it? Yeah. Okay, Let, let's do that. Okay, so what is N operator, uh, Henry? N is A dagger A. A dagger A, okay. So N operator acting on N, what it will be the result? N. N, N. Excellent. Okay, so we know that A acting on N will be what? Alpha? N minus one. N minus one. Okay, and let's do the complex conjugate of these. So what you will get, you will get N, A dagger, mm -hmm. will be N minus one, alpha star. Yeah. All right. So now let's do the, the product of this. What you will get, we will get that A, N, A dagger A, acting on N will be N minus one, alpha star, alpha acting on N minus one. All right? Okay. Then uh, we get alpha square, true? Because alpha yeah. is just a number. Then we will get n minus one, n minus one, which is equal to one. one. Then we will get alpha square equal to this side. And from the other side, we say that a dagger a is n operator acting on n will give us n. So the result will be n, n, n. True? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we, we get alpha square is equal to n. We assume that the phase will be hidden inside of the operators, then we get alpha equal to square root of n. Yeah. Excellent. That's what I yeah, but wait, wait, don't don't jump. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. I think you are right. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So then we will get a acting on n will give us square root of n, n minus one. Thank you. Good. No problem. Okay. And the other one will be n, n plus one, right? Or can, can someone check it out? You, ha you yeah, have them right, just one. switched. Just switched. It's n plus one, yes. Okay, thank you. And plus one. Excellent. So should I erase this part or you, you are okay with it? Okay. Should I keep it or should I erase it? Just keep it. Okay, I will keep it because later on I will share the notes on also I will post them as a PDF so you can watch them on the on the website. Okay, all right. So we do have these. And we, we use exactly the same formalism and we did the, uh, uh, by hand, we apply the quantization to Hamiltonian as well for electric and magnetic field radiation. And then what we, will got, we got, we got that H for electric and magnetic field is given by summation of K and sigma, which K is the all K vectors that we have Remember that the problem is, was, was having a, a box of dimension L, dimension L, and dimension L. So it was a cube. 
uh, and the surface they were conducting in such a way that the electric field vanishes at the surface. And uh, then uh, uh, if you do the, the same quantization, you will get one divided by two h bar omega k, remember? And then we got a, a, uh, a of k and sigma, a dagger of k and sigma plus a dagger of k and sigma, a of k and sigma. Okay, so this is what we got from the last time. And we say, okay, usually we write it in, in a different form. We write it in, in this way, which is k and sigma, exactly the same uh, uh, formalism that we had. So it was uh, a dagger of k and sigma, a of k and sigma plus one half of h bar omega k. All right. So remember, this was the Hamiltonian. For electric and magnetic field. Which we obtained from Maxwell equations for vacuum and I, I think uh, uh, all was clear. So we will, we will write also what was the A potential, what was the E uh, uh, electric field and magnetic field in terms of uh, annihilation and creation operator. So far we got this. And we got an interesting uh, property, which uh, 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 I also, I, we got an interesting property, which was for vacuum. And we say that, okay, vacuum is the place when there is no electric and magnetic field there and just see what is happening with, the, with, the, with that situation. So essentially uh, uh, for us, vacuum was a place that you could get the minimum energy. And we know that for harmonic oscillator, minimum energy is not zero. Although if you look at the potential, the potential for, uh, for harmonic oscillator is something like that, okay? This is the potential that you have and uh, this region is, uh, is infinity for us. So the, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, um, how to say the, the quantum particle uh, may penetrate that you will see it as a solution, but is uh, is a bond that you have, and that is one divided by two m omega square x square, and this is x direction. Okay, and we realize that if we do this sort of quantization, we find out that this is the zero level energy for us, a ground state, so which has one divided by two h bar omega as an energy. So we call it E0, is a ground state. And then the next one will be uh, given by a, a, a creation operator, which is, if you look at that level, which is uh, one half of h bar omega, then the other one should be twice of this. So it should go to here. That is the second level of energy, which is given for, for n equal to one. Then you will get three divided by two h bar omega. So, and, and, uh, and et cetera. So you will get infinite uh, number of states, which all of them, they are separated by h bar omega from each other. And we discussed that you can apply the creation operator here to go up. And also you can apply annihilation operator to go down. Okay. But the note is that we can never go to zero energy. And that's an important information. I mean, previously people, they may think, they thought that maybe, okay, it's just mathematical tools that you have to avoid these one divided by two h bar omega and, and uh, since it's diverging, and then you should, you should just take care of it later on. Uh, let's, let's see. Let's see the, and follow up the discussion that we had. And some people also, they call these as an, an operator, which is 
for the mode of K and polarization of sigma. So remember, an operator is A dagger K and sigma, A of K and sigma. Later on, we will just talk, talk about only one single mode. So we don't talk about uh, all different modes and we don't keep the, uh, the subscript of K uh, vector and sigma. So we say, okay, later on, any time that you want to build up specific case, then you have to sum all, all K modes. So, uh, and this is a number operator which will create a photon or a mode in K vector and polarization of sigma. So essentially, if you say that the modes are given by, I don't know, uh, mode of K1, mode of K2, mode of K3, mode of K4, and Ki, then you can apply each of those operators to create one of the photons or one mode and that specific, uh, let's say, state. So let, let's go and, and describe this. I'm sure that all of you are familiar with bracket notation. I don't think that there is need, uh, any need to describe this. So uh, we already talked about vacuum state. And we say vacuum, uh, we, we usually write it as a zero, okay? And we know that uh, uh, if, you, if you look at the annihilation operator acting on vacuum, what you will get, you will get vacuum. You cannot bring it down more than this. If you act creation operator on vacuum, then what you will get, you will get one. Okay, and the coefficient, of course, based on the discussion that we had, is a, uh, is given by one, of course. And remember that uh, I here I omitted the subscript of uh, uh, k and sigma, but I can say that uh, this creation operator has an, a subscript of k and polarization of, let's say, uh, uh, sigma one, or let's say uh, sigma equal to one, then what I create on the other side, I will create one photon in the mode of K with the K vector of uh, K and with polarization of uh, uh, sigma equal to one. Okay, so, for example, if I want to say that I have creation operator and the K vector is given by KZ only, and there is no KX, there is no KY, Z hat, and polarization is left-handed, then acting on vacuum, what I will get, I will get one photon, which is propagating along Z direction and has the polarization of left-handed. So this means that if that's the Cartesian coordinate is Z, X, and Y, then photon is propagating along this direction and has left-handed polarization. So what does it mean that the, if you look at the, uh, uh, vector of electric field is oscillating in this way. So essentially the oscillation that I plotted, it's, it's wrong, so it should be like this way. So it's oscillating like that, coming here and coming here, okay? And that's the tip of electric field and magnetic field always will be orthogonal to this in vacuum. Okay, so this is the notation that you should remember. So if you have two photons, then how many operators you should act on vacuum? Two creation operators on vacuum. So if I want to say that I have two photons with the mode of K, Z, Z hat and left-handed polarization, both of them, these two photons are created by applying the creation operator 
twice acting on vacuum. Of course, you need a normalization factor of one divided by square root of two. Okay. So this means that I have two photons exactly with the same property, that they are co-propagating. You cannot distinguish them at all. Why is there the normalization factor? We apply this. Okay, so you will get a dagger acting on one, uh, on zero, what you will get? You will get one. One. A dagger acting on one. Two. Square root of two of two. Oh, square root of two, of course, yes. Okay, Sorry. That's, that's the square root of two that uh, I sense, have to take care of. And Henry kindly pointed out to me. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay, so we will discuss about uh, this sort of situation later on. I mean, uh, but what I want to tell you that uh, be careful uh, 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 that these annihilation and creation operator, they will create specific mode. So uh, let me ask a philosophical, a philosophical question. What is photon? I don't know. Okay, it, it has quantum property. Is the excitation of the mode, excitation of field, and it can be created by annihilation and create it can it can be created or annihilated by creation operator and annihilation of operator of the mode. So that is something that you have to take care. And remember also that photon is boson. Okay. So in some cases, there will be arguments that you have to be very careful to make a symmetric cases of a state. Because if you don't make a symmetric situation of the states, you may come to a conclusion which is completely wrong. So you have to be very careful with those uh, uh, situations. We will discuss about them when we talk about entanglement. Okay. So now uh, uh, let me let me do something more interesting. So what is vacuum? is zero, right? Is zero in any mode. Any mode that you have it in your mind, it's zero, okay? The state there is zero. So essentially, if I want to write vacuum, I have to write zero, 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 okay? Of mode of K1, K2, K3, K4, Ki, and etc. So that's the state of vacuum. Because now we know that we are dealing with, with modes. So we can talk about one photon in being in a mode of K1 and one mode uh, photon to be in a mode of K2. And for each K vector, we have two polarization uh, 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 states. So we can have sigma one and sigma two, or sigma equal to one and sigma equal to two. Okay? So just, just have a big picture. So essentially, vacuum is summation of, uh, uh, sorry, is, is a product of all of those states. Okay, or simply people, they write it in this way. Is, this product is look like tensor product if for those people they didn't know uh, uh, mathematical formulas about this. Good, so if I have annihilation, I have the ability to create a, a one single photon in a specific mode of, let's say, K1, then I have a dagger at the mode of K1 and polarization of sigma acting on vacuum, then I will get one photon in K1 and sigma, and the rest is zero.
Okay. If I have the ability to create a device to create mode of K1 and sigma and mode of K2 and sigma prime acting on vacuum, okay? Then what I have, I have one photon created at a mode of K1 and zero. This is zero, zero. Oh, sorry. K2 and sigma prime. And the rest is zero. Okay. How many of you are familiar with the entanglement? Yeah. Can you create me an entangled state of one K1 sigma? Oh, let's go with a simple way. One photon, which has a left-handed polarization in the mode of K, left-handed polarization, and one photon in right-handed polarization, minus one photon in right-handed, let's say mode of K1, and, oh, sorry, K1, K2, K1, and K2. This is the entangled state, right? So can you tell me what is the operator to create this? What, what, is, what is about the rest? The rest is vacuum. So all of other modes, they are vacuum. So always you have vacuum keeping it with yourself for the rest of the uh, uh, modes. So can you, can you tell me what is the uh, operator that you need to, to apply and creating this mode, this entangled state? Um, I guess it would be creation K1 uh, left uh, times um, creation K2 right um, a minus uh, creation K1 right um, uh, creation K2 left. K2. And then that's divided by square root of two. Exactly. This is what you need to apply in order to create an uh, uh, entangled state. So if you go to laboratory, if you find, I mean, if you find a Hamiltonian that can give you this expression, then you have entangled states. You can create entangled states. Can anyone tell me have you seen this somewhere? This is the Hamiltonian that you need, or operator, let's call it operator. To create entangled state. Of course, entangled state, we mean that between mode of K1 left and and K1 and K2 in the polarization degrees of freedom. Can anyone tell me an example of that you have this sort of Hamiltonian showing up or operator showing up with something else? No? Um, is it some sort of down conversion process? Exactly. If you do the down conversion, which you will see it, uh, it will be a part of the, our lecture. So I drive the Hamiltonian there and the interaction in the nonlinear crystal type one or type two, here is a type two. Then what you will get, you will create this 
and times another operator. So I call this entangled operator and times an operator which has annihilation term in, which this annihilation term appears at the mode of K3 and polarization of sigma. So what it does in general, annihilate one photon, but creates two photons in, uh, in, in tangle. Okay. So this is the Hamiltonian that you will get from, uh, from uh, um, uh, nonlinear optics, which, which we will discuss about that is for SPDC. Okay. But just remember that get familiar with the language that we are using, and soon you will see these sort of things uh, in uh, during next lectures. Any questions? Um, since this operator is the sort of time evolution of a state, does it have it does have to be unitary, right? Total should be unitary. With okay. If you talk about Hamiltonian, yes, not talking about operators, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So if you look at, that's the reason that I say that this is from SPDC, Hamiltonian. So if you uh -huh. look at the entire of the system, yes, is unitary. Okay, okay, makes sense. Okay, yes. always you have a term plus Hermitian conjugate. Uh, okay. okay, thanks. Uh, it's, it's, it's Hermitian and also is unitary. Okay. Uh, what else? What else I can ask you? <laughs> okay, so this this is uh, you know uh, the big picture that we had. Of course, I will come back to uh, to uh, to harmonic oscillators when we want to build up a coherent state because we need them and we need to understand the mathematics for harmonic oscillators, one-dimensional harmonic oscillator. But right now I will concentrate on modes and I want to ask you to do me some favor and doing some sort of calculations, okay? Just to make you, makes you yourself familiar with what we are doing. So we learn the quantization of the field. We found, we found the Hamiltonian. We understand that there is a creation and annihilation operator. By the way, remember the creation and annihilation operators and P, uh, uh, they, are, they are not Hermitian creation and annihilation operator. What is Hermitian is Hamiltonian. What is Hermitian is P and Q. They are observable. So not annihilation and creation operators. Clear? Okay, good. Now let's, let's uh, look at the field. So we just talked about Hamiltonian. Let's look at the field and see what was the field uh, uh, that we had previously. And again, we will review the vacuum action and see in a few example, what it will be the result of a uh, uh, vacuum action. So for electric field, uh, for, uh, I mean, we did the quantization and now we are replacing everything uh, with, with operators. So A vector potential of X and T uh, we use X or R. I think we use R. Yeah. Yeah, we use R. Uh, okay. R and T is given by summation of all K sigma. All right. And we found the coefficient. If you remember that from uh, making uh, um, the Hamiltonian from electric and magnetic field being similar to harmonic oscillators, we found the coefficient of A in our calculation. I think the coefficient was uh, given by H bar divided by uh, two epsilon naught uh, V, uh, if I'm not remember, uh, okay, I'm not wrong, is omega K power of one half. And then we had E, the polarization for the K vector and uh, for the sigma, okay? And then we had creation operator, uh, sorry, annihilation operator at mode of K and uh, sigma e power of i k dot r. And remember that was time dependent, okay? This was a, a Heisenberg picture. It was not a Schrodinger picture, okay? And the other term was plus a dagger 
of k sigma time dependent of course e power of minus i k dot r i think that was all that we had from the calculation and we obtained what i have done i just replaced this term which uh, we found it uh, uh, by making the harmonic oscillators to be and, uh, EM, and uh, Hamiltonian of an uh, electric and magnetic field to be equal to harmonic oscillators. And then we got this uh, relation. Okay. Then we say from uh, since we assume that we are working in the column gauge and there is no charge, there is no current, then we had this relation for electric field which electric field traditionally people they write it as e plus plus e minus which e plus and e minus both of them they are operators okay one of them is a conjugate of the other one and essentially uh, let me write it down so for e plus i will write it here is uh, given by summation of K and sigma h bar divided by two epsilon naught v omega k power of one half. And then we had another uh, omega k square. Uh, sorry, we had another omega because we have to take the time derivative. We have minus sign, which the minus sign goes away with that one. So we will have an i here. And then we had uh, A plus should be annihilation operator of K and sigma. And then we had E power of I K dot R. Okay. This is E plus and E minus is a complex conjugate of this. Some people, they would prefer, I mean, uh, to write it in this way, K and sigma, H bar divided by two epsilon naught V, the omega will go inside of uh, uh, square root of two. So that will be H bar omega K, power of one half, you have A, K, this is time dependent. They write it in the Schrodinger's picture. So we say K and sigma, E power of minus I chi of R and T. And here chi is omega t, omega k t, minus k dot r, minus pi divided by two. Because there's a minus sign multiplied by uh, plus, it will be e power of i pi two that will give you the i coefficient here. Okay, so some people in some books, you may see it in, that is written in this way. Any other phases also can be just attributed here. If you want to have, you can have a phi in general. Okay, it's clear. Good, and magnetic field is given by, magnetic field is given by curl of A, which again can be written as B plus plus B minus, which B plus in a similar fashion can be written as K sigma uh, K hat, I'm oh, sorry, K cos, uh, where is the polarization? Uh -huh, I have forgotten the polarization is EK here. E E, K, and sigma. So you have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
e, k, and sigma. Okay. And cross e, k, and sigma. This is what we have for the magnetic field. We have again I, but uh, now the relation will be a little bit different. So you will get H bar divided by two epsilon naught V omega K. And we don't forget that was the volume of the cavity that we had. And uh, e, a, a dagger, A, sorry, K and sigma E power of R minus I chi of R and T. Okay. This is what we got for uh, B field. And B negative is B plus dagger. And E negative again is E plus dagger. Uh, be careful, I'm highlighting here. If you have positive sign, that goes with an annihilation operator. It, it, you may get confused easily. This is a sign for the frequency. Is a positive frequency and negative frequency. This is what they, they do. And here also is a traditional way of uh, assigning it. So you may see it in books. The same scenario. If you have B plus, B plus goes with a annihilation operator. Doesn't go with creation operator. Okay. Question? Now, let me ask you, you know now vacuum, vacuum well, right? Vacuum is zero mode. There is no mode in any, uh, no photons in any of those modes. Can you calculate for me, what is electric field average on vacuum? Okay. Do it, please. Calculate what is the expectation value of electric field for vacuum. Hint, do it for a single mode, okay? What, I, what do I mean? Take away the summation out. I mean, don't consider the summation. Write the electric field in a, just as, let me write it down. So I'm asking you to do this calculation, zero. Let's do it for a, one single mode. So that single mode will be I h bar, uh, sorry. H bar omega k uh, omega because later on we can say that we it is true for all omegas two epsilon naught v power of one half e of sigma a of sigma e power of minus i k of r chi of r and t acting on vacuum. Uh, uh, plus the Hermitian conjugate acting on vacuum. What is the operator? I mean, what will act on vacuum? Sigma? E? E, e of sigma? The creation and annihilation operators? Yeah. So Chandler, what is the action of vector of E on zero, on vacuum? 
So this acting on zero. Okay, so any, anyone else guys can can tell me except Eric? Zero. It is it is it will uh, be it will be out of this, right? So uh, E of sigma acting on the vacuum will be out of this. So it it will be treated oh, as sorry, a I thought, you, I thought you meant I, I thought you meant A of no, not A, no. So I'm talking about these elements of these terms. This one and this one. Those are parameters. They are not operators. So they will not act on zero. So they will be out of the expression. H bar omega divided by two epsilon naught V power of one half E of sigma E power of minus I chi of R and T. Then for the first one, what we have, we have zero A of sigma and zero. And for the second one, we have the complex conjugate of these, what we have. So it is uh, exactly the same expression apart from uh, E power of plus I chi of R and T, but we do have zero a dagger of sigma acting on zero. So now let me again ask uh, Chan Chandler. Sorry, Chandler, I, I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> Can you tell me what is this? Annihilation operator on zero, acting on zero? Uh, you are muted, sorry. Uh, zero. Exactly, that is zero. Bravo. And what about this one? Creation operator will also give you will one. Zero. Yeah, we'll, creation exactly is zero. Bravo. Because creation operator will give you one mode, but we know that the modes are orthogonal to each other, so then it will be zero. Will be the inner product of zero and one. Excellent. So electric field expectation value of electric field in vacuum is zero. This is very important because it shows that the, really the phase that you have it there is completely random. I, I think you are familiar now with the calculation that I'm going to do. Can you do the calculation and show to me what is the expectation value of E dot E in vacuum? I mean, this is true for any mode. So if you want to sum, sum all, all modes, that will be again sum over zero, and again will be zero. So then sum uh, over all modes, again, will be zero. So it will be chi and sigma of, uh, let's call it zero E of K and sigma. And we calculated that E, K, and sigma will be zero. That will be summation of k and sigma act on zero, and that will be zero. Now, the question that I have for you, would you please do the calculation and show to me what is the expectation value of e dot e acting on zero?
done. Okay, so guys, um, how many people they calculated? Just raise your hands. I mean, uh, trace the bottom. Okay, good. So uh, that's fine. That's fine. No, no worries. I think. Uh, it's totally fine, but uh, let's look at uh, look at the expression that we have to apply. So we don't have any problem with e dot e. So we get this expression multiplied by this expression, but they have different polarization states. So they have sigma and sigma prime. So then you will end up with some terms like this. So you do have e sigma dot e sigma prime. So what is the result? is delta of sigma and sigma prime. So we know that the summation on sigma and sigma prime will be canceled out one of them. Then everything will be replaced by sigma. Okay, sigma prime will be replaced by sigma. This is what I have done here. So I have E multiplied by E. So this term will be power of two. Then what we will get is, uh, is H bar omega divided by two epsilon naught V. Then we have four terms, which is the product of A, A dagger. So one is A, 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 A times A. The other one is A dagger times A dagger. And the other one is normal order or uh, anti-normal order. So then we will get uh, A, A dagger and A dagger A. So uh, when you do the calculation, you know that the action of annihilation operator on vacuum will be zero, okay? Then these and that term, they will not do any actions. So the, the result will be zero. The result of these two, by using the commutation relation can be translated in these. Again, that term acting on vacuum will be zero. Then uh, only one will remain. So this is the result that, that we obtain. And of course I have to sum over all polarization of sigma which we do have, okay? So let's look at the result. So the result will be one half of epsilon naught, no, sorry, one half of one divided by epsilon naught times volume summation of one half of h bar omega k, summation over k and sigma. So what we were looking for, expectation value of E dot E on vacuum, which is this. So it is one divided by epsilon zero, volume summation of k and sigma, one half of h bar, Omega K. Can I write in this way? Zero expectation value of one half of epsilon naught E dot E is acting on zero is given by one divided by volume summation over K and Sigma of one half of h bar omega k. Can I write it in this way? What's this term? Uh, electric field energy density? Exactly. Electric field energy density. Okay, so Manuel, is that N? Uh, I see clearly that it's N. It, there is no N. 
There is so absolutely is, no n. N is zero. It's not. No, it's not your n. It's my n. There it's is n infinity. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, yeah, tell me. Can, can you remind me how a a plus a dagger a dagger gives us one? Okay, of course, of course. Let's do that. So, guys, a, uh, Felix is asking about how I moved here to here. All right, Felix. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Let's do that. So, a a dagger plus a dagger a. So what we know about this is, or maybe let's do it in a bit of different color, sorry. Um, a, a dagger plus a dagger a is the operator. So we know that the a and a dagger commutation is equal to one, then a a dagger minus a dagger a is equal to one, then a, a dagger can be given by one plus a dagger a. Now substitute it here, we get one plus a dagger a plus a dagger a, which is one plus two a dagger a. S sorry, uh, I was more, more the other terms, the, uh, with both the same. Like a a and then the a dagger a dagger. Oh, those terms they will be zero. Let's see what is happening. So is is that term clear now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that term is clear. Yeah. Okay. Now we are looking at the term number one and term number four. Okay. So we are looking at action of zero. A a right. E power of minus two i chi acting on zero, all right? Yeah. Okay, so the phase will be out, e power of minus i to chi, then we have zero, a, a acting on zero. So a acting on zero? Yeah, zero. Okay, then we have zero and a acting on zero. Then what's that? Uh, zero again. Okay. Yeah. And uh, um, for the similar fashion, you can prove it for the other one. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, yeah, thank you. Because uh, that will be bringing up from vacuum to photon number state of one and then photon number state of two then you know that it, uh, it will be the inner product of zero and two, and then they are also not okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, so you, you always apply them to the right. Uh, yeah, you the, can apply them also to the left. It's up to you, honestly. Or, or the left, but you can't apply if you're applying kind of one each way. Oh, you can do that. I mean, absolutely should be the same, but you are yeah. not allowed to, I mean, in this case, of course, you can allow them to, 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 to interchange them because uh, uh, they commute with each other, they are both A, mm -hmm. but essentially when it comes to be, let's say, A, A dagger, A dagger, A, then definitely you cannot uh, bring these A dagger here. So and writing that A dagger, yeah. A, A dagger, A. So you have to do some action to make them all normal ordering or anti-normal ordering. And then you can act this one to the right, uh, to, uh, to the right, that one uh, to the right and that one to the left, for example, or acting yeah. this one to the right, getting the result, and then acting this one again to the right. Okay. Okay. Yep. But you have the freedom to act them on the left or acting them on the right. It's up to you, but you are not mm -hmm. allowed them to swap them. Okay. Unless you. you do the proper ordering. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me erase this. Good. Just write it on this here just to complete that. Okay, so uh, so then we got the conclusion that zero, oh, sorry, let's go with the same pen. Zero, there's something uh, more important here, that's so one divided by two epsilon naught e dot e 
will acting on zero will give us one divided by volume summation on K and sigma, okay? Which is one divided by two H bar omega. Oh, sorry. It should be one divided by four. Yes. Because I added one divided by two by hand. So it will be one divided by four. Lovely. Omega K. Is there any summations on, uh, is there any sigma here showing up in the summation? There is a summation over sigma. There is no expression depending on sigma here. All right. Then that will give you two options for the summation, which will be sigma equal to one and sigma equal to two. Then in total, you have two polarizations. Then you will end up being to one divided by volume, summation of K, one divided by two H bar omega K. Sum over sigma will give us two. Oh, not two factorial, sorry. Two. <laughs> okay. So then we know the this is the in, uh, you know the energy of electric field for vacuum. Huh. Interesting. And again, we will get to the conclusion that is infinity, but uh, let's do a little bit of mathematics again. So we will bring the summation of K into the integral form. And we know that the modes that we had it for the volume was uh, 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 two pi divided by L. Then we have for each dimension, we have two pi divided by L as a normalization coefficient changing from K vector to uh, let's say a, a variable of N. Then in general, we have L divided by two pi for each dimension, which is three dimension. We have L divided by two pi uh, power of three. Then we have integral of D three N. Oh, let's say D three K is up to you, really, okay. Then uh, omega k can be replaced by k vector, uh, the, the uh, uh, wave vector. So omega divided by c is k. Then if you replace it here, it will be k times c. Then this will be going to be one divided by volume times uh, volume divided by two pi power of three integral of d three k. Then we have uh, one divided by two H bar K times C. Volume goes away. Then we do have uh, one divided by two pi power of three integral uh, and sorry. One divided by two H bar C integral of K D three K. It looks like dkx, dky, dkz. And then we know very well that we can go from Cartesian coordinate to spherical coordinate since the space is uh, symmetric and we expand the spherical uh, dispersed to infinity. Then uh, what we will get this d3k, which is the volume, can be replaced by four pi uh, k squared dk which is a volume of a sphere. So we assume, uh, we assume a, the element volume of a sphere. So we assume that we have a, a sphere with the thickness or radius of uh, D k, at the radius of K with the thickness of DK, and then we integrate it over the entire the space. And then if you replace here, you will get one divided by two pi power of three, uh, H bar C divided by two, integral of, uh, Or pi integral of k power of three dk, and that is clearly huh, goes away to be two to pi goes away. It will be h bar c divided by two pi power of two integral of k three. It will be k power of four divided by 
four from zero modes to infinity, which clearly is diverging. Okay. So again, we are dealing with infinite energy. Now is a good point uh, to start a new relation and learn about two physical phenomena which reveal and prove that this energy or vacuum mode exists. And we will review them. One of them is Casimir effect. I'm not sure that uh, we can do that. Do you want to have a rest or uh, you are okay to continue? How many people they go for rest? I mean, just- Can you scroll a bit up, please? Pa pardon? Can you just scroll a bit up on your notes? Yeah, yeah, thank okay. you. Of course. So how many people they want to go for a, a break of 10 minutes? No one? Okay, we will continue. <laughs> I'd like to grab some water quickly if possible. Okay, so let's have a wall. Uh, um, let's be back exactly sharp at four. Okay, 13 minutes, not longer than this. Beautiful. Okay. Now we will solve two problems. Two. I would say important problems in quantum information, in a quantum optics or quantum electrodynamics, such a way that you understand that these vacuum and vacuum energy is not fake, okay? <laughs> it's not really just mathematical tools. I mean, some people, they had these thoughts. And we will see that uh, uh, vacuum has a pressure, vacuum has these modes, uh, let's say uh, this property, and we will see them in a few seconds, okay? So the first example, which is not in your book, but I like it, I like, uh, I like it very much is Casimir effect, okay? Okay. Uh, let's... Let's, let's start with, uh, with a, 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 a specific situation, which we break, uh, uh, let me add flow. We, uh, we break the symmetry of uh, space. And we want to understand when we break the symmetry of the space, uh, there will be any effects due to the vacuum. Let me first give you an impression, okay? You have to un understand it. You have to have the, uh, the intuition about the physics. Assuming that you have two conducting plates, okay? So these conducting plates, let's call them this one, plate number one, and plate number two. And let's choose our coordinates such a way that uh, this is Z coordinate, this is X coordinate, and that is Y coordinate. Okay. And the plate is, uh, let's say the distance between these two conducting plates is um, D, okay, all right. And there is no electric and magnetic field here. We don't have any radiations inside, it's vacuum. Okay, let me ask you one by one, I mean, some people, Josh. So I have these two plates, okay? If you look at my hands and you, I think you do see, so, yep. I call them region number one, region number two, which is between, and region number three, which is the other side. 
can you tell me what you expect as the mode to being in the region number one, two, and three? <clears throat> like, what do you mean, what do I expect as the mode? Yeah, as a mode. So can you tell me, do you have a condition for region number oh. two? Do you have a condition for region number three? What are the right. conditions? So in region one, you could pretty much have any, in region one and three, I'm assuming there's no bounds on the left and right of those respectively. So there's gonna be an infinite number of modes allowed. Whereas in region two, you're restricted to modes where uh, the field goes to zero at the plate, or the transverse part of the field goes to zero at the plates. And therefore you have a quantized number of modes. Excellent. So let's go to someone else, Thomas. Okay, so the description that Josh gave uh, pretty much is true, is completely true. Uh, there is a, a condition that, of course, you have to, even for region one and three, there is a condition that the field from the other side also should be zero at the conducting surface, okay? The, uh, I'm sure that he knows and he meant this. So based on what he said, what he mentioned, do you expect to have more modes inside or outside? I think more outside. More outside, okay. Yeah. So when we have more modes outside, do you expect to have, and because electric and magnetic fields, which they come, of course, in this case, we say that there is uh, energy of H bar divided by two uh, omega, even for vacuum. So we expect that there is a frequency there so, uh, but is a, a ground state. Then we expect that the mode outside will be higher than inside. And most usually electric and magnetic field, they have pressure, right? Yeah. They have energy, they have momentum. So which means that they have pressure. So do you expect to have a pressure higher inside or pressure higher outside? I think high pressure outside. Outside. So what do you expect? I should place expect the two places, they will be attracting together. each other, pulling, yeah. okay? This is Casimir effect, okay? So if you have two conducting plates, keep them close together. Since the boundary condition applies, the number of modes will be different, the symmetry is broken, then you will get the two plates attracting each other, okay? Um, the pressure okay. will be coming from outside. Yes, who is asking, Teng Tenglu? Yeah, me. Go ahead. So, uh, I just have a question. So how small the gap must be in order to see this effect? Haha, -ha, that's a very good question. We will explicitly define the relation. Okay, we will find the relation and I think you, you, you raise a very good question. The, uh, uh, we will drive this, but I mean, this is the intuition behind. Remember that uh, a Casimir effect can be done for uh, it can be done for dielectrics, can be done for different materials, then you can get even the two plates to be not attracting each other, repealing each other, okay, depending on the boundary condition that you apply there. Okay, so just be, be careful for those uh, languages. So here we talk about vacuum, we talk about conducting plates, and uh, let's drive the equation. So uh, Tenglu, since you started, can you tell me are all modes permitted to be inside? No, right? Which, uh, modes, no. which modes are permitted to be inside? The lowest mode? Uh, okay. Those that they will be vanishing at the conducting plate. So it means that here and here, electric field must be zero. Why? Because if there is an electric field, electron is oscillating. Yep. Okay. This we know very well that on, on, on the surface of uh, on the conducting, uh, that will be uh, that will uh, that will be zero. Okay. And looking at the materials, will all materials or all conductors will be it, will they be good conducting uh, or conductors at any frequency? Did you get my question? So assuming that we are at the visible domain, we have iron, metal, 
So it definitely is a, is a, is a conducting. Will iron be again conducting uh, a conductor at let's say X-ray? Uh, no. Okay, so we have to be very careful that there is a cutoff for the modes. Okay, so not all, uh, all, and uh, not uh, all conductors. Good. At different frequencies. What they have, they have a domain which they are good and they are good conductors at that domain, okay? Remember this, mathematics is different from reality. We have to consider that situation as well. Uh, Josh, you have a question? Nope, I'm good. Okay, I've, I felt that, okay, anyway. So the modes that are inside, they have to follow the uh, uh, the dispersion relation. So the dispersion relation that we obtain, I don't want to drive them again, was that for all omega k that we have, for the transfers, let's say x and y, any modes can be allowed because this is an infinite dimension, okay? So these plates are infinite dimension. And then uh, what we will get, we will get c times the k vector, which the k vector essentially given by square root of kx power of two plus ky power of two plus along z only k vectors are allowed such a way that here will be zero and that region also should be zero on the surface of two conducting should be zero. So it means that you should have pi n divided by d power of two, which n is an integer. Clear? I, I think we draw that, right? I mean, we use that for the case of, uh, uh, for the case of uh, the cube that we did the quantization of the field. All good? Okay. I call these together transverse K vector transverse k vector. So then omega k is equal to c times the transverse k vector. Usually we use these uh, uh, notation k transverse. So it's k transverse power of two plus pi n divided by a power of two. All right. What is the energy of vacuum? There. For this conducting plate. is one divided by two, right? H bar omega K. We just did a calculation. Those are the modes are permitted, K and Sigma. Since we have Sigma, then that goes to be K and H bar omega K. So we, we uh, bring the two polarization as a coefficient of two and we place it here. All right, so that is the energy of vacuum for this specific case that we do have between the plates. All right, now, this energy, as you see, if you do the summation, it will be going to infinity. But I know that the conducting, uh, the, uh, the conductors there or conducting plates they have a threshold to be a good conductors. So at higher frequency, they are not any more good conductors. So by experiment, 
I have to place exponential of minus lambda omega k as the cutoff for the frequency in which the plates are good conductors. Okay, so then here, energy of vacuum will be summation over k, h bar omega k, e power of minus lambda omega k. Okay? Which these will cut uh, those frequencies such a way that the plates is not any more uh, good conductors. All right? Good. I think everything is fine. And lambda, then later on we can approximate it to be tending to be zero. So essentially that action will be mathematically resolved by, by bringing it to, to, to be one. So giving the right weight to all of those frequencies. But in, in reality, there, there will be a, re, a lambda coefficient which will give you uh, the cutoff wavelength. All right. Good. Then what what I will get? I will get summation of k h bar omega k. No, let's replace omega k with c. K transfers plus n pi divided by d, power of two, e power of minus lambda c, square root of k transfers plus n pi divided by d, power of two. Good. This is the summation over all k, but we know that along z direction k is quantized. This is what we have done. But along x and y is unbounded. So this summation, now it's break out in two different. So we have k transfers and we have a summation over n, essentially, of, uh, let's take the h bar c out. Uh, we get h bar c, then square root of k transfers plus n pi d power of 2, e power of minus lambda c, square root of k transfers plus n pi d power of 2. Okay, now you do understand and you do have a better feeling that this summation n is acting on this term and this term, and the summation of k transfers will act on this and this, okay? Good? Okay. So for the transfer side, we can use the same uh, method that we just applied. It will be, let's assume that the dimension of the plate is L by L, then it will be L times L, it will be the surface divided by 2 pi power of 2 integral of d2 k transfers. So this summation, which is double summation, if you do the, uh, uh, the mode expression, then we will get this relation, OK? I will keep the summation over n. And n, remember, is changing from 0 
to infinity. Oh, sorry, sorry, it doesn't change from zero to infinity, it changes from one to infinity. Mode of zero, it will give you zero amplitude. So I, it should it should really have a start from n equal to one. What about negative values of n? Uh, it, it's it's symmetric. You, it, you, uh, we can express it in uh, in terms of sine of n k z, and that that's fine. I I don't the, the okay. negative value shows up as a phase. We don't care. Okay. Um, we we assume that electric field is real with the expression that we had it. We assume that the electric field is real, and that's a that's a reason. If you have a negative sign, it shows up as a phase, and the phase goes inside of a, a argument of sign. <clears throat> if I want to tell you. Um, uh, look, look, what is the expression for electric field that you have it here? It is e power of i k x x plus i k y y. All right. And then you have a sign of k n, uh, sorry, uh, n pi divided by d. Okay. What is important that n will never be zero because that if n is starts with zero, that will give you a zero uh, uh, in the sum. So not playing any any role in the calculation. Good. So now uh, let's do the calculation. We will get h bar c in uh, a divided by two pi power of two integral of d to k transfers. And that will be the summation or n equal to one to infinity. And then that will be where k transfers power of two plus n pi divided by d power of two power of one half e power of minus lambda c k transfers power of two plus n pi divided by d power of two. Good. Okay. Since the space is symmetric, then what you will do, you will jump to synodical coordinates, then that will be h bar c a divided by two pi two square uh, two integral of k, let's write in this way, two pi uh, k rho d k rho, and then you have a summation of n equal to one to infinity, k rho power of two plus n pi divided by d power of two, one half e power of minus lambda c, k rho power of two plus n pi divided by d power of two. Okay. You can do the change of variables. K square will be replaced by U. Then you can simplify that expression. And finally, I will leave it to you. It's a little bit challenging, by the way. You have to, you have to do some tricks to apply the calculation. But at the end, what you will get the energy for vacuum. Is given by minus pi divided uh, pi power of two divided by 720 h bar c divided by a power of three multiplied by a. So energy divided by a, this is energy of the uh, energy of vacuum. And that is the, uh, plate surface is given by minus pi power of two divided by 720 h bar c divided by a power of three.
Huh. Then, energy divided by the surface. We, we can discuss about that. When I have energy, which is the potential, of course, in this case, we know very well that the gradient of energy with a negative sign will give, all, will give us, uh, sorry, I choose D, not A. It is d power of three, d power of three. So we know that uh, if you take the gradient of energy with a negative sign, you can calculate the force, right? So therefore, uh, and the only parameter that we have is d here as a parameter. So we take minus derivative with respect to d, of the energy, which is minus pi power of two, 720 h bar c divided by d power of three times a, then the force along z will be minus pi power of two divided by uh, uh, 40, four, uh, uh, 7, uh, h bar c divided by d power of 4a. And therefore, force along z divided by the surface will be minus pi divided by uh, pi power of 2 divided by 360, h bar c divided by d power of 4. Oh, sorry, it's uh, 200. 40. Yeah, 240 not, is not two is three. Okay. So force divided by surface is a pressure. So the pressure that plate C along Z direction is negative of this value. All right. Any questions? I was just wondering, so the integral we had had just all positive quantities and the answer's negative? Yes. <laughs> there is a trick. You have, to, you have to watch. You have to do it at home and see, see what I am skipping. I'm comparing to the case that there is no plate. Okay, I think you got that. There is a, there is a step which I'm, I'm jumping and I want to leave it to you because that's a really beautiful problem that you have to solve it. You have to consider three different cases. That's the reason that I divided in three regions. Okay, you have to look at that and see why uh, what is happening when you have a plate comparing to the case that you don't have a plate? That's the reason that you will get a negative sign. Okay. Now look at look at look at the expression. And by the way, the the calculation is tough. It's really tough. You have to do a lot of tricks to to uh, to find out how to solve this integral because uh, the in integral and summation. Because if you do it together, uh, the result uh, will be diverging. You have to be very careful and handling in a proper way. So for example, you can give it to Mathematica. Mathematica will give you infinity as a result. So you have to do it properly. So uh, 
let, let's look at the physics. First of all, is this effect quantum or classical? Is it quantum nature or is it classical nature? Classical. Classical, why classical? Uh, sorry, no, uh, quantum. Why? Because we're considering the vacuum energy, which we can't derive. Uh, you can tell me from the pressure that I found. We have a H bar, eh? Exactly, I do have H bar. Okay, that's a sign that is quantum. Is the effect big or small, Tenglu? That's you. That was your question, right? Yeah, it'd be small for me. Because you have H bar times C, which if yeah. you do it in a, in a SI unit, you will get 10 power of minus 30, uh, 31, no? right? <laughs> I fell a physics one, okay? Times uh, C, which is 10 power of eight then steel is extremely small. It's 10 power of uh, minus 20, 23, okay? It's even, it's even smaller than the atom size, sorry. Yeah. Um, let's see. And what's about D? How can you emphasize D? The good point is that it goes with one divided by D power of four. So if you go smaller and smaller, smaller, then what is happening, this effect, will go exponentially, okay? It doesn't go linearly, it goes with the, the d power of minus four. So that's the reason that in order to see this, you have to bring really the distances as much as, much as close to each other. Then you will see the effect, okay? But this is a proof that energy, it's a vacuum has energy. Okay, and, and you will see it clearly. And people, they observe this as well. All right, questions? I'm, I'm encouraging you to do that at home. And by the way, I explicitly choose a version which is different from Wikipedia, such a way that you can do the calculation in more proper way because in Mathematica, they use a pole, I mean, uh, going and adding a factor, which is just uh, uh, finding a trick to solve the, uh, the problem properly. But here I went completely with the physical picture, which is uh, you do have a cut off uh, wavelength, okay? Good, please do that at home and tell me next time which step I am jumping and, 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 uh, and correct me. Okay, this is one example. Second, let's go with the second example that I have. Let me see. Okay, second example. <sighs> I asked you to read lamp shift, right? How many people they have done this? One, two, whom else? Who did not? No, okay, okay. So I will I will tell you a land shift now. Okay. So, did, pardon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, the simplest problem, let's say atom, atoms problem that you solve, of course, apart from harmonic oscillators that uh, in, in quantum mechanics, uh, was hydrogen atom, right? And in hydrogen atom, uh, First of all, you found, I mean, you move to, let's say, center of mass coordinate. And when you move to the center of mass, which essentially is close to the proton site, because the mass of electron is extremely small, then you deal with Hamiltonian, which was minus h bar divided by two mu. 
which you know that this mu is uh, the mass that you have it there, and uh, uh, Laplacian minus the potential. I'm, I'm writing this for the electron, by the way. Uh, e squared divided by four pi epsilon naught r. Uh, r is the radius that you choose for the interaction with the electron. And then you have the psi wave function, which is psi of uh, r, theta, and phi equal to uh, the energy eigenvalue that you have. Psi r, theta, and phi. I'm solving the hydrogen atom problem. And if you assume that this is your proton and this is your electron, then this is the interaction that you have between these two. And the only potential that you deal with is the column potential, which is minus. All right. Okay, we solved this and we found the eigenstates and we found the eigen energy. So can someone tell me what, uh, what we were expecting for eigen energy and eigen uh, states? First of all, the potential was R dependent or is R, R dependent, right? So I'm not expecting the symmetry that I have for Laplacian to be changed. So for angles, theta and phi, I'm expecting the solution to be YLM of theta and phi. This is what we solved also during the classical electrodynamics. But what I'm expecting for uh, R coordinate to be changed. And then what you will get for R, the, uh, R coordinate you will get uh, uh, some R of N of rho, all right? Which I don't want to talk about R of N of rho. What about the eigen energy? What do you get for eigen energy? What's eigen energy depending on L and M? Okay. I'm just type it yes and no in the chat room, guys. Reza type, okay. Other people? Tell me your thoughts. Or you can unmute your microphone and just tell me. Arman say no, Flo say no, Thomas no. Okay, I think all of you, you know very well that is not depending on uh, on uh, L and M. So the eigen energy depends explicitly on N. So although the wave function can be labeled by N, L and M, the energy will be depending on N. So there is a degeneracy there. All right. And the energy was given by minus one divided by N squared. I don't remember really the coefficients, but I think you know very well uh, this property. Let's go with proportional to one divided by. Clear? Good. So, of course, it cannot be zero. <laughs> uh, when n is infinity, then this eigen energy will be zero. So it means that the electron is free. So if I look at the energy level, this is E equal to zero, which is means that free electron. So what you do at that case, you ionize the hydrogen atom, okay? And you do have a free electron. But you do have negative side and then the energy for the ground state is one divided by one with a coefficient, which that coefficient is, uh, uh, if I remember, it's minus 13 point something. I don't remember really, maybe 13.4 electron volts? Six. 
I'll oh, thank you very much, Reza. So 13.6 electron volt. Merci. So let's write it down. Minus, uh, oh God. I hate it. Minus 13.6 electron volt. And this is n equal to one state. What about the other one? This is the ground state. What is the next excited state? Is n equal to two, right? What it will be the energy? Will be minus 13.6 divided by four. Can someone do that, that calculation? Please? It should be minus three point something. Three point minus four. Three point, three point four. Three point four electron volt, and that will be n equal to two. All right. For the ground state, we do have only one state because L also is zero, M also is zero. Right, so ground state is very clear. You have one state of one S. All right, but when you go to N equal to two, then there is a degeneracy on L and M. So if L is equal to zero, then you have S state, which I call it two S. And also you do have P, which is 2P. Okay. And P by itself has T, let's say substates. Good. One is L equal to zero. Then you have M equal to zero. One is L equal to one. And then you have degeneracy of L equal to B minus, and M equal to minus one, zero, and one. All right. And by the way, this is the result that you can get it from Schrodinger's equation. You can get it also from Dirac's, Dirac's equation. Exactly the same result. You will get this exactly the same result. So what is happening, then you will see that there is no difference between energy of 2S and energy of 2P. They are exactly the same. Energy depends only on N. And that's important, not L and M. Of course, if you apply magnetic field that depends on M, this is the Zeeman interaction. I mean, we know very well, I, we assume that he's in vacuum. Good. But I think it was in 1940, or 50, I don't remember really the, the, the year, but I think it should be 1940, that Lamb experimentally found that these two states, I mean, these two level, let's say I'm erasing this, I'm zooming in here. He ex experimentally observed that this, this is not a single line, but it is two line. Even when you don't apply anything, okay, you don't apply the magnetic field, you will see that one of them is two S, the other one has is two P. Okay, no, sorry, it's vice versa. S is higher, has higher energy. Okay, 2s and 2p. So it's not, uh, uh, they don't have the same energy. There is a small energy difference between these two. And this small energy difference, which he observed experimentally, is about 10, 56 megahertz. In terms of electron volt, can someone make a guess? What, 
What do you expect, guys? What it should be the difference between these two? I mean, if you were experimental, tell me. Ten power of minus six electron volts. Okay, so something like about four multiplied by this. What I mean, extremely small. So because we are comparing, let's you know uh, we are comparing uh, electron volt to uh, uh, to micro electron volt. It's not even milli; it's micro electron volt. So in 1940, when Lamb observed this, uh, there were a huge discussion in the community that what is the reason? I mean, physicists. We look for small deviation and we try to explain them. We try to find the reason why there is a this small uh, deviation. Any small deviation, any details that we do have, uh, if you take care of them, is really important. We like to simplify things, but of course we don't want to deny those small details. I remember that uh, there's a, uh, uh, one uh, famous story that Bob Boyd mentioned uh, several times. Uh, uh, the, the first paper that they observed second harmonic generation. How many of you, I think most of you know what is second harmonic generation. You have a, 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 a nonlinear crystal, you pump it with a, a, a pump laser, which uh, is with frequency of omega. And then on the other side, due to the nonlinearity of the crystal, uh, due to the property that you do have, uh, you will get a frequency of two omega. Okay, that's the second harmony generation. And then uh, the person that first observed this uh, uh, had a, uh, an image or a figure, which it was a dot because the spe it was a spectrum and he showed that there was a dot at that specific frequency. Then editor, when he was, uh, he was proofreading the manuscript, he thought that this just a dot due to the, you know, the, the paper, the pen, uh, pen that the, uh, the author, they draw things. So editor simply deleted this. <laughs> okay, so even small deviations are extremely important for us. This is 10 power of minus six electron volt comparing to electron volt. And they observed this in the laboratory in 1940, 1950. Uh, it, it's a huge, I would say, uh, uh, achievement. I mean, for those people, they work in the laboratory, they know very well what I mean. So there was huge discussion in the lab, in, 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 in the community, what is the source behind of this? You can do the proper experiment. I don't want to talk about the experiment, what people they have done, how they excited the, uh, the ions and they send it to, to their chamber and they isolate it from the electric and magnetic field radiation and they only see the effect of vacuum. So, but again, when they repeat it, they see this. And there were no explanation, but that was the source for creation of quantum electrodynamics that you will see here. Okay, so uh, is clear the problem now? I mean, this story is not given in the book, so I have to, I have to go from the basics. Okay, all right, now, now let's, Let's find out what we expect as uh, to be the explanation for this effect. So um, in those toy mod model that we do have is proton at the center, and then we have electron as a cloud here. Okay. And the potential that you do see, as we discussed, is the potential uh, due to the column Interaction is one divided by four pi epsilon naught E squared divided by uh, R. This is the potential that we do have with minus sign, of course, sorry. All right. But we know now that this atom is not alone. What else do we have? Vacuum. And vacuum, what it does, it deviates 
this potential. It changes the potential from the radius of R to be radius of delta R. So uh, this is the potential deviated from the original situation due to have packing. Okay. So we agree that if we want to do the proper action for the vacuum, we have to have electric field, which is given by, uh, um, should I write it down? Yes, let me write it down properly. Uh, God, I don't remember really the expression. Uh, I, I have written in the notes, so you can you can correct me if I'm uh, I'm, I'm doing some mistakes. So it will be summation of uh, um, of k and sigma. Then I do have h bar omega k divided by uh, two epsilon naught v power of one half. Then I do have E of K and sigma, a dagger, uh, sorry, a of K and sigma, E power of I, chi of R and T, which I know that what is going on with uh, EF, Okay, and then Hermitian conjugate of this. Okay, so that that um, is this. Isn't there, a, is there an I like an imaginary? I, I image? placed it inside of chi, if you remember. Oh yes, of course. Yes, yeah. Thanks, sorry. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Please just check this coefficient because that's important uh, hereafter, if you need it. So it it should have a proper uh, form. Uh, and we know that if you have such sort of electric field, although it is for vacuum, remember, even when we assume that we do have vacuum, also there is the mode of exponential of I omega T, which omega has the form of vacuum, okay? Uh, the mode that you do have it for vacuum. Then you expect that that vacuum interacts with electrons here. So it deviates the electron. It starts to interact with the electron. But we know that the vacuum is completely uh, homogeneous and isomorphic. So it's, uh, uh, sorry, uh, um, homogeneous. And uh, there is no difference between the mode here and another mode here. So it's completely symmetric. So then what I expect that there will be a, a Lorentz force which the Lorentz force will tell you that the force that applies to the electron will be given by E times the electric field, okay? And this force is given by uh, uh, M, second derivative of, uh, let's say position deviation that we do have, delta of R, this is deviation. times E, E. Okay. This E later on, I will replace it with vacuum action. So I apply because this is an operator, I will apply it to vacuum state. But remember, this is the logic. So you do have the hydrogen atom, and we assume that the vacuum acts on the electron, it starts to deviate it from the place. There's a minus sign here because the charge of the electron is negative. So <clears throat> what is the form of electric field? 
operator. This is what I have written here. It is the time derivative, right? When it's a time derivative, I have to look at the time uh, dependence of the electric field. So the time dependence of electric field is e power of minus i omega k t. All right. Then, since the electric field is oscillating with this, I'm expecting the delta r, the deviation, will go exactly with the same functionality. All right, it's a, it's a simple harmonic oscillators problem. Then delta R essentially will be given by E divided by M omega square times the electric field. This is an obvious solution that I'm expecting. So if you place the, this inside of that equation, that will be E divided by M uh, uh, omega square all right and if you take the derivative of uh, if you take the derivative of e with respect to time second derivative of e with respect to time then you will get minus omega square this is what we do have for uh, uh, for uh, uh, for annihilation operators so d square d time uh, dt square of a, k, and sigma from a Noether theorem, we do have minus omega 2k of a dagger of k and sigma. Okay. We already showed in the previous calculation that d a dt is minus i omega. If you remember, with the commutation relation with Hamiltonian, if you take the second derivative, again, you will get exactly another minus i omega, which if you multiply them together, you will get minus omega square. All right? So this is the form that you get for the deviation of, uh, of let's say, deviation from the position of the electron. So delta r then will be given by e divided by m omega square times e which means that you do have E divided by M. Oh, let's see it in this way. Because that should be applied to all modes. Then for all modes will be summation over K and Sigma. Then uh, E divided by M omega K power of two. I have uh, then uh, H bar omega K divided by two epsilon naught volume power of one divided by two. Then we do have E, K, and sigma. A, K, and sigma. E power of I, chi, R, and T, plus Hermitian conjugate. Remember, this is the delta R, the deviation from, from the place that you do have. Clear? All right. Now we will go, remember this expression. So delta R essentially with the coefficient is E field. All right, good. Okay. So now we know that the potential that we do have since the position of electron A is changed, it's deviated by delta R, it's different from the original one. How much is different? By the position that is uh, that changed. So now Vr becomes Vr plus delta R. Now let's do the expansions and we agree that delta R comparing to R is extremely small. So delta R is much smaller than R in terms of magnitude, then we can do the Taylor expansions. So let me ask someone else, uh, Yutarsh, 
you if I'm pronouncing right, sorry. Of course. No, that's okay. It's fine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you tell me if I want to expand it around R equal, uh, you know, uh, when delta R equal to zero, if I want to expand it along this region, what it will be the result? Will be V, mm -hmm. v R, right? Is the Taylor expansions plus yeah, delta R. Delta R. Uh, it's in this way. That gradient of V. Yeah, V. At uh, delta R equal to zero. Delta R equal to zero. Plus one divided by two factorial. By two factorial. Exactly. Yeah. So I will write it in a different form. You can correct me. For those people that uh, they have taken courses with me, they know very well that we find this relation. X at J, derivative of I, derivative of J of V at uh, when delta R is equal to zero. Okay, this is the expression. So is, is, since it's two uh, multivariables, you do get this expression. Yeah. Okay. Any any questions so far? Or all is okay. Okay. So V of R plus delta R minus V of R. We are looking at the difference in potential due to, let's say, the effect of vacuum. And this is the potential of electron that we see. That is explicitly given by delta R dot gradient of V at delta R equal to zero. At, we know very well that, okay, this is at R equal, uh, at position of R plus one divided by two factorial uh, delta of xi, delta of xj, i, r, j potential. All right, plus the other terms. Good. Now we have to look at the, uh, look, this is the expression that we do have, but we have to look at the, uh, the expectation value for the potential, because we have to understand uh, uh, on which state we are acting. This is the deviation of the potential, but this deviation may happen for uh, uh, atoms uh, or electrons to be in S level or can be happen in the P level or in any other things, other states. And also we know very well that Delta R that is now given by the electric field with the coefficient should also act on the vacuum, okay? So then we are looking at the expectation value of this when atom is in a specific state of psi and also uh, the electric field will act on vacuum, okay? So, EM field is in vacuum, atom, specific state. For the time being, we will keep it general. We assume that the state that we have it for atom is psi n in general, psi n, L, and M. And then for electric field and electric and magnetic field, we assume that uh, uh, the expectation value that we want to calculate it is only happening for the case then when, uh, when we have vacuum. All right? Good, let's do that. So now we are looking at the expectation value of delta V. Is that fine? Yes. Delta V means this one. Oh, let's do it in a different way just to not get confused. We are looking at the expectation value of V of R plus delta R minus V of R is expectation value. What I mean that remember that is atom and vacuum. 
And the other side also, I do have vacuum and atom. Okay, this I'm doing the, the calculation. It's clear? Remember, what is acting on what? Is delta V acting on vacuum or an atom? Remember, what was V, the potential that we had originally? What's this? Right? There is a term of R there, right? Which tells the position of electron, and there is an E, which is the charge of electron there. All right? But delta R is given by this term. So if I'm looking at the expectation value of this, I have to be very careful that delta R will act on vacuum and delta V will act on atom. Clear? Any questions, guys? Is it clear or not? This is an important step. Good. Now, how many terms do I have? I have two terms, this one and the other one. The first one, I have delta R which should act on a vacuum. This is equal to vacuum dot acting on atom. acting on atom state. There are two independent system, right? It's atom and what we call it is a dress state. I don't want to really go into this sort of discussion again. Uh, then I have another term, which is plus one divided by two factorial vacuum delta xi, delta xj, vacuum. Then I have atom, i derivative of j of v of atom, plus the other terms. So let's take the first one. This one, calculate it. What is zero, which is vacuum, acting on delta R, which delta R is E divided by M omega square. Of course, there is a summation over all K and sigma, and that is omega K, of H bar omega K divided by two epsilon naught V, power of one half, E, K, and sigma, A, K, and sigma, E power of I, chi of R and T, plus the Hermitian conjugate of this one. Acting on zero vacuum. What is the result of this? Zero. Who said Arman? Uh, how do you know this? Didn't we do uh, like the expectation value of the electric field? So this is just a scalar multiple of that. Exactly. This is what we have done just about an hour ago as an exercise, right? Before calculating the E dot E, we ask it what is E value. So this is zero. Okay. So that terms goes away. Look at the second term. Second term, 
will tell us that what is, uh, now I'm looking at this term and see what we will get is vacuum, which is, oh, sorry, let's write it in this one, is zero, delta xi, uh, because this is a vector, I have to be careful with it. It is again E divided by M omega and summation. There is a summation of here K and sigma of uh, gosh. And sigma prime, let's write it in this way, okay. And omega K power of two, H bar omega K to epsilon naught V one divided by two, then I have the all possibility between uh, um, EK and sigma, uh, AK and sigma, E power of I, K, R and T, plus Hermitian conjugate times the other term, which the other term is uh, E of K and sigma prime, A of K and sigma prime, uh, e power of i chi of r and t plus the other term acting on vacuum. Okay. You know how to do the calculation, I think. Right? And we have already done, and this will give you energy in the vacuum, right? That was the exercise that we have performed. So we know this term as well. And the other side, I'm, uh, and we know that uh, when I is not equal to J, that term will vanish then this will have an additional delta ij to which the summation over i and j, which is the summation over the sigma and sigma prime will reduce the atom uh, uh, interactions or expectation value for the atom part to atom Laplacian of V acting on atom. So I call this alpha, and I will leave it as an exercise for you to do the calculation at home. And please do that at home. It's not a difficult task. Be careful with the coefficients just only. And then the entire of the, uh, uh, the calculation that we do have will reduce to, uh, I'm looking at the expectation value, uh, value of uh, V of R plus delta R minus V of R equal to right now one divided by two. And then I have alpha, which I asked you to do the calculation. Then we do have atom Laplacian of V of atom. Remember, please use the above ex expression. And calculate alpha. All right? It's, 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 it's a good exercise. Now, what is Laplacian of V? The challenge now is calculate Laplacian of V. What was V? Laplacian of one divided by four pi epsilon naught minus E squared divided by R. Those terms are constant, so it will be E squared divided by four pi epsilon naught, Laplacian of one divided by R. What is Laplacian of one divided by R? Negative four pi times the delta function. 
there is a negative R. sign. Exactly. There is a negative sign as well. Minus yeah. four pi delta of R. Right? So then you will get E squared divided by four pi epsilon naught, four pi delta of R. All right? Good. Then it will be E squared delta of R divided by epsilon naught. Okay, let me just look at the calculation that I have done for this and see. Okay. Okay. So I have done it in different way, by the way, <laughs> not the same way that I'm doing here. So that will be atom acting on um, E, oops, sorry, E squared divided by epsilon naught uh, delta of R and atom which this means that you do have integral on volume d3 of r for the atom states you do have psi of n l and m of uh, i'm looking for notation r theta and phi then I have E squared divided by epsilon naught delta of R. I have psi of N, L, M, L, R, and theta and phi. That's star. Okay. So this means that you do have E squared divided by epsilon naught. And then finally, you have psi of N, L, and M at the position of zero. Power of two, or let's write it in this way. Simply, side of R uh, zero and square modulus. Okay. So the difference in uh, the potential that we do have depends on the state that you are dealing with. So let's go to the conclusion. You do have V of R plus Delta R minus V of R is equal to E squared divided by epsilon naught. And uh, then I have alpha, which you had to calculate it. Well, let's do that. So it will be one divided by two alpha e squared divided by epsilon naught. Then we do have psi of n l m of zero and square modulus. So I will tell you what is the expression for alpha. Uh, also, there is a trick in doing the calculation for uh, for these. Uh, essentially, what I have repeated, you have to do it again. And if you remember uh, E dot E, uh, um, write it down and then we can discuss about that because it's, it's a little bit tricky how to drive alpha, okay? But anyway, this is the difference in potential. And you can see it clearly that depends on the state or that electron is in.
Questions? Or we are okay? Uh, I was wondering why isn't alpha infinite? Because uh, that's the point. The... You're, you're raising exactly the right point because previously we calculated alpha, right? Mm -hmm. We did, of course, with the coefficient, and that alpha goes to infinity. True, Eric? Yes. Okay, I think this, this is your question why alpha is not yeah. infinity. Then we will, we will discuss about that. Good. Yeah. Okay, how many people they know how to calculate alpha? Because we have already done that. How many people they don't know? Just, just write it in the chat room. Okay, I'm seeing you and I, it seems that you all know how to calculate uh, alpha because we have done previously for energy, E dot E, if you remember. It's exactly the similar form. So if you remember, if you look at the E dot E, we found that the energy is going to be infinity for vacuum, acting on the vacuum. And that was a challenge. And even when we go to the case of Casimir effect, we look at the cutoff wavelength there. We say that, okay, we have a frequency that uh, this is not any more good conducting. And then we, we resolve the issue by applying um, um, an exponential term, which cuts in a certain level. So here, if you do the calculation for alpha, then you will deal exactly with a similar expression. So alpha uh, will be proportional to summation of one divided by omega power of three. If I remember, let me check the note. Uh, I think it's given by omega, yes, power of three. Okay, this is the expression that you will get it for this. We will, uh, oh, let's write it in uh, terms of K. It will be proportional to uh, one divided by uh, K power of three, because omega can be replaced by uh, uh, CK. And uh, the coefficient that you do have it is depending on the volume, depending on the H bar, depending on E, many, many other parameters, okay, I, I, M squared, uh, epsilon naught and it's in m squared and epsilon naught and other things. Okay, so and we are we just want to solve the problem that we do have it here. We don't want to get infinity in general, let's say. So, and we know very well if we want to jump from uh, the this, this, the summation of k to the integral form, we replace it by volume divided by two pi power of three, integral of d3 k, k power of three. No, oh, sorry, uh, k power of minus three. This is what we do, we do have it. So let's write it in the form that we do have, uh, we have written just to reduce the ambiguity. Do you agree? So alpha is proportional to this quantity, integral of d3 of k, one divided by k power of three. All right, and if you take the integral, then uh, that goes to be um, uh, pa, 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 pa. that goes to be uh, um, I, I'm just checking if I'm doing I'm doing in a proper way. Yes, that's fine. Uh, nothing is uh, is wrong. So it is integral of the same technique that we can apply to the sphere volume, uh, four pi uh, k squared dk, then uh, the modes will change from zero to infinity of four pi k squared, uh, oh, let's say, um, four pi dk divided by k which is means that we have proportional to integral of zero to infinity of uh, uh, dk divided by k, which essentially is logarithm of k. 
All right. Good. And of course, K is changing from zero to infinity. And what is the value? Is infinity. Now look at the physics. What are you dealing with? Is atomic system is an electron and a proton system. Is the electron and is the proton. What are the wavelengths that can be seen by the atom and by the electron? Those are the two limits of the wavelength that you have to apply as a boundary for integrating over all K vectors. So electron will not see wavelength which is smaller than itself. Okay, so this is what we say that it should be. It should be uh, uh, um, uh, the maximum range that you have is a Compton wavelength that you do have it for. And on the other side, also uh, the, for the atomic system, you cannot see wavelength which is shorter than the Bohr magnet, uh, uh, Bohr uh, uh, wave vector. Bohr, um, uh, Bohr radius, uh, 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 the wavelength or wave vector that you assign it to the Bohr radius. Okay, so those two are the limits that you apply that you see this or you see this. Okay, this is the range that you will see the effect. You should see effect on, on the entire system or you, can, uh, you cannot go below that dimension that you do have it as a Compton wavelength. And then when you apply this, change, uh, this, uh, this condition, then you do have um, Bohr, uh, Bohr uh, associated Bohr uh, wave vector or Bohr radius wave vector and Compton wave vector, dk divided by k. And those values are given by, if you want to just read a proportionality, it will be pi divided by a0. And the other one will be mc divided by h bar. And you apply these changes and if you, and these uh, uh, variables and, and calculating the entire the system, at the end, what you will get, you will get this quantity. Uh, for this, you will get Ln of, if I'm not wrong with the coefficient, of course, sorry, it's, it should be proportional to Ln of uh, h bar c divided by e square. And I think in this calculation, I have replaced with uh, four epsilon nodes. I have replaced the A naught as well. Okay. Uh, uh, anyway, do that at home. I will just write it down. Do it at home and calculate what is alpha. But Eric, that was, I think, your question. And this is the way that you avoid the infinity, I mean, the divergence of these series. Now, let's go as the last statement. Let's go and do the, uh, do the calculation for two different states. So we got that the, the variation in the potential is one divided by two alpha e squared divided by epsilon naught psi of n, l, and m zero square modulus. Okay, let's do that for the two states that we are interested in. Interested in. What are those two states? Psi of two, zero, zero, which is the uh, 2s. Um, 
Yeah. And 2s1. And do it for 2p1. Okay. Let me look at the psi for those psi. Okay. Mm -hmm. So psi for two zero zero is one divided by square root of four pi, a two pi, a zero power of three, two minus r divided by a zero, e power of minus r divided by two a zero. And for the other one, we have one divided by four, two pi a zero power of three. And then we do have r divided by a zero. We do have e power of minus r divided by two a zero cosine of theta. So can you tell me what is psi two zero two one zero square modulus at r equal to zero? Zero. Is zero. Okay. So this expectation value of V of R plus delta R minus V of R for psi to one zero is zero. So I'm not expecting that to be changed because uh, the, the function is odd function, right? If you look at this one instead, psi of two zero zero, then what you will get? I get one divided by four power of two, two pi a squared power of the power a three power of one. I have four, I have, that's all. So then I will get one divided by eight pi a zero power of three. Okay. So then the difference will be vr plus delta r minus V of R is one divided by two alpha E squared divided by epsilon naught and that is one divided by eight pi A zero power of three. All right. Which if you calculate it, it's approximately one gigahertz. And what was observed experimentally, one zero five six megahertz. I think if I remember well, if you put all coefficients, it should be something like ten forty megahertz. Which is really, really good approximation. I would say not approximation, good. Uh, approach. Okay, so with this, uh, I will uh, close the lecture and uh, we can have a discussion. Next lecture will be about coherent states and, and squeeze state. So uh, it will be very quick because you already done many of those, uh, let's say, uh, expressions as assignments or, uh, uh, or we have done during the lectures. So next lecture will be quick. And um, I will encourage you really to read those uh, this stuff carefully, okay? Uh, let me stop sharing. Uh, do you have any questions, guys? I will stop recording. <laughs>